Hello YouTube, I am Sarandalot, and for some time now I've been looking around on the internet, on YouTube, and on other sites such as uh, the Blender Artists uh, forum at how to make a... initially I started off looking at how to make a uh, shadow only material in Cytals, and then right now, as of right now, I'm using Blender 2.70 uh, you can't you can't really do that. So so there's a a bunch of different workarounds that people have come up with using the node editor in the comp compositing. And I looked at a few of them, and I thought I would just make a quick, simple little tutorial, uh, fast on how to how to do how to do it the way uh, the way I found was kind of the most simple and easy to understand. So this is the result that I'm going to end up with here, so I'll just go ahead and jump into it. First we'll take a look at the scene that I just set up. So basically I have I have here, I modeled just quickly the edge of my desk. Uh, I just have a monkey head, a couple of tubes, and a cylinder. Uh, I, I put lights um, kind of emulating where the lights are in my room right now. I have one on the ceiling and I have one that's kind of like two joined together on my desk. Uh, if I go into wireframe mode here you can sort of see um, that up here is where is where this white, this whitish blue light is coming from and right above as you can see in the reflection on the water bottle here is where a nicer orange warmer light is coming from. Now this d completely depends on what picture and what scene you're using so I'm not gonna dive into that I'm just letting you know that that's the, kind of the setup that I have right now. Um, so, I have this, and what's very important about this particular method of doing the, the shadows only uh, material, or a shadow catcher, or basically what it comes down to is just uh, compositing uh, with cycles, is that you have to have uh, three render layers. Now, the first render layer, I'm assuming, I'm, I'm doing this under the assumption that you know how to use uh, render layers just quickly go over it now anyways, but uh, working with the working with the assumption that if you are watching this tutorial, you already have a pretty a basic understanding of how these mechanics work. So the first render layer is going to be your main objects. It's going to be everything that you want to actually show up on uh, in your final render. So these objects here, I'm going to have them on layer one. So the first one here, as you can see. Now, the second layer, uh, the plane that I want the shadows to be on, any objects that I want the shadows to be on, are only going to be on the second layer. Uh, and the second render layer here is going to contain only the second layer. Uh, now, the third render layer is going to still contain only the second layer. However, it is going to exclude the first layer, and that's why I called it Shadows Clean, because it's going to only render the shadow plate, this plate that's going to be this is gonna be here. Uh, now, the lights uh, and the camera I have on both render layers, uh, so I can basically, as you can see, if I hit M, I have them on this render layer and this render layer, so I didn't like hit shift and select both of them. So now what will happen is that the lights will affect both the objects on the first layer and the plane on the second layer. Uh, now one thing that you are going to have to do is go to over to the uh, rendering tab here and all the way down under film hit the box that says transparent. You need that because you're going to want the alpha channel in the background. So now that's uh, now that that's done, I already rendered this, uh, so I'm going to hit control left arrow, go to the compositor, and this may look intimidating at first, but I will explain what, uh, what the deal is with everything here. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, put this at 100 samples and render it uh, quickly. So you can see here. So what's happening is 
first the first render layer that we're getting, which is uh, which is the main objects, is rendering only the objects. Uh, as you can see, the plane and the lights and stuff still affect the objects, even though they're not on the same, even though the plane is not on the same la layer. Now the second layer here, as you can see, is just is just a plane. However, it still takes into account the objects that are not on this layer, that are only on the first layer. So, as you can see, the, the green kind of reflects in a little bit off the monkey head, uh, but mainly what we're most interested in is the shadows that are created here. You can see the very dark spots where the mesh is intersecting, and the darker spots with, uh, that appear there because of ambient occlusion, which is the, the, uh, the objects being really close together. So what's going to happen now is that uh, since the third render layer, which is going to show up soon, is exactly the same as the second render layer, except it doesn't take into account the objects. So what's going to happen is that instead of getting all these shadows, it's going to render the exact same thing, but as if the objects that were on it just didn't exist at all. So uh, there you go. That's what's happening. I might fast forward. Uh, through these rendering parts, depending on how fast it takes. All right, so here we are. We're uh, I'm just gonna put the viewer node to the plane backdrop like that right now. I hit Control Shift and then click on the thing that I wanted the viewer to be to be seen. In case you were wondering, so what's what's happening now? Uh, I'm gonna run through each one of these and anything that I have minim I have the RGB curve minimized here. I'll get to that in a second though. So the first thing that's going to be happening here is that we have our shadow clean layer, which is like our clean plate, as well as the shadow layer, which, as you can see, is exactly the same, except for the fact that there are shadows on one of them. So what you're going to want to do is take um, a mix node, a color mix node, you know, shift A, color, mix, you've got it right there, and change it to subtract. Put the clean plate into the top image, put the shadow plate into the bottom image, and subtract it, and you will end up with an image that looks like this, kind of weird, uh, it's like reversed almost. So then all you have to do is take a color invert node, same menu, shift A, color, but invert, it's right here, and then uh, you just plug that into the color, and then you get kind of the reverse of that. Uh, then what I did is I just put an RGB curve to kind of intensify the shadows a little bit, as you can see there. And then all we have to do after that is take an image, in this case this is the, the image on my desk, and take a color, another color mix node, except this time set to multiply. So what's going to happen then is I take the output from the RGB curve, so basically the final shadow, what the final shadow is looking like, and I put that into the bottom of the multiply uh, node, and I put my image that I want in the background onto the top of the multiply node. And what this does is that it takes everything that's everything that's uh, white. It basically doesn't doesn't really take it into account. It, I'm simplifying it, but what happens is that what's white doesn't really get taken into account, but what's dark gets uh, kind of multiplied, as the name would suggest, onto the image. So as you can see now, we have our background image with uh, with our shadows and even, as you can see, I'm just going to zoom in here, a uh, little bit of reflections off of little bit of reflections off of uh, some of the materials, which is why I like this method. Some of the other methods don't attach those kind of reflections, and you have to fade them sometimes if you need to, but this, this is kind of a nice workaround. So now you have uh, shadows, but you have no objects, so we're going to want to add those in. So you can take a an alpha over node, that's shift A, color, again, a lot of stuff in the color menu, alpha over, right here, and you're going to put the, the result that you just got into the top image value, and then you're going to take the uh, your object render and put that into the bottom image value there, and then you have got a finished result. <laughs> uh, it's that easy. And I mean, there are lots of ways to do it, 
but personally I find that this one is the best and it works the best for, at least for what I'm doing right now um, and there's a lot of stuff that you could do uh, to play around with this I mean just looking at the RGB curve here and opening this up you can you can instantly just kind of make the shadows more intense less intense make them lighter you know do do all sorts of weird and crazy and wacky stuff with it. Uh, and you know you can always what you can always do is also throw in either a brightness and a contrast curve um, node here or there just add something uh, throw in a bit of like color change just to because I mean it's a good result what we've got going on here but it's it's not perfect you know I mean I'm I'm looking at the uh, the top of these tubes here and I'm seeing some stuff that eh maybe it should be changed maybe the perspective is a little bit off but that's just you know the camera setup main point though here is that we've got a uh, a really nice looking effect and honestly though uh, like I'm looking at this now and zooming in this looks this looks pretty decent considering I mean if you compare it there's a little bit more like this would be some stuff that I would pay attention to fine tuning it afterwards if I looked at the the, the comparison between the shadows of the real objects here and the shadows of the fake objects here I notice right off the bat that the real objects, the shadows are a lot more yellow because the light overhead in my room is very orange. Uh, so maybe what I would maybe what I would do is take the shadows, add a little bit more yellow to them, or in the initial scene setup, maybe make the light more orange and see how that works. Just kind of an initial natural workaround for that. So, anyways, uh, I'm liking the result we have here. Uh, there you go. It's uh, pretty much the 10 minutes how to do this and um, well yeah I hope you enjoyed it feel free to uh, comment tell me what you thought if you feel like it and uh, yeah I'll see you in the next video